I know this is like top tier content. This is why you guys subscribe to the channel. Hey folks, welcome back to the vlog. It's your girl D here. If you're new, welcome to the channel. I do everyday lifestyle content type stuff. And if that's something that you like, make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a video. Today's a chill at home kind of day, okay? But I'm actually in the middle of making some pasta salad because I want to have that as a side with dinner tonight. So you know, of course, you got to make that a little bit early so the flavors all melt together, okay? And it tastes fabulous. So I'm in the middle of doing that. I actually have the pasta boiling, so I need to get down there. And I'm going to be using my bread maker to make some bread today. And once I get downstairs, I'll kind of <laughs> talk to you guys a little bit about the bread maker because this is not the first time that I've made bread with that. Okay, so we're in the kitchen. Okay, so this is our bread maker, Russell Hobbs. Beautiful. It kind of looks like something from the Jetsons, truthfully speaking. And then I've got the little booklet here to make basic white bread. So I have actually made, come on, focus on me, there you go. I have actually made bread from this bread maker before and I actually made this one, rapid bread, because at the time I always had all the ingredients. Whereas what the basic one, I never had, what is it, dry milk powder down here. But I just found some dry milk powder and I figured, okay, it's kind of a chill day today and I'm not really doing anything right now. Let me just make some bread. And it's also cheaper when you make your own bread. It also tastes much better. I'm laughing because I'm thinking about the times that I made the bread. I've made bread, I think three times. And each time they've come out hard as a rock. Mind you, I have followed the directions to the tea, making sure the water is the right temperature, all that jazz, right? I know every single time they've come out hard as a rock. So I've just used them for breadcrumbs, croutons, and it works for those. But I wanna be able to make bread more regularly so that I don't have to buy loaves of bread and I can just make my own. So we're gonna try this basic white bread recipe out today. But there's like a bunch of different types of breads. You can make corn flour bread, milk bread. What else can you make? You can also use it to mix the dough for you and then use it in addition to your, like use it in conjunction with the oven. Like if you're making focaccia bread, you can't make focaccia in a bread maker, but you can obviously make it in the oven. So the bread maker could do all the work for you, kneading the dough, all of that, maybe even proofing it. If it needs to be proved, I believe it does have to be proved. And then you can just do your little dimpling and put it in the oven. Oh, you can make pap. Ooh, that's cool. Cause you guys know that I like pap, pap and gravy. I was just watching Taban Tseko's video today and he made pap and gravy and I was like salivating when he was cooking because it's like one of my favorite South African things. So one thing to note about this bread maker is that they're big on you using what they give you. So this is like teaspoon, tablespoon measurement these are the paddles that go in the machine and like once you put all the ingredients in and whatnot there's like a indicator on the machine that will beep so that if you want to you can take these paddles out which i typically do but i think this time i'm going to keep them in i don't think i'm going to take them out maybe that'll make it easier to remove and then there's a cup here that you can use for stuff so i'll use this i do have this but I'm just gonna use this stuff because it's what you have and then I don't need to use up my other stuff. Oh, you hear that? That's thunder. We got the door open. That's thunder. One of the other problems that I was having with the bread was removing it. <laughs> it was a struggle. Like, my boo can attest to this because the first time I made it, he had to help me get it out of the machine because it was just stuck. And mind you, there's butter in there. So you would think eh, it shouldn't get stuck, but it got stuck. And these are like nonstick. Like the whole thing in there is nonstick, but it was sticking. Let's get into this thing. the water and the butter 
in here. And so let me let me show you the instructions because they're very big on how you put things in. So I've already got my flour set aside here. I did my water and my butter in here. You have to add everything else because if you have the yeast and the like sugar and stuff in here first, then it, it could possibly kill the yeast or just mess it up. So you have to you have to go in order, otherwise you're going to mess up your loaf. And then it gives you all the instructions. You can do three different sizes. So I'm doing the 900 grams one. So I've measured all my stuff out for that. And then I'm just adding them in the order of this. And then it's hit start and let it go. you guys the pasta salad i'll show you oh, i don't know if you guys heard that <laughs> that's good timing hold on so in about three hours we should have a loaf of bread let's hope hope and pray that this one isn't too hard to take out but i'm not going to take out the paddles because I'm thinking maybe that's why it's been a little bit difficult for me to get it out. And it's also been cooking for too long. So I may have to check it around the one and a half hour mark to see how it's doing. But I just finished the pasta salad. It's kind of like Greek inspired, cucumbers, grapes, cilantro, feta, olives, all the good stuff, chickpeas. So we'll have that tonight with some sausage that, whoop, that I had shown in the previous vlog at the grocery haul. So I wanted to do the pasta salad now so that all the flavors can mix together. And by the time that we eat it, hopefully everything tastes pretty good. So the bread is done. I did put it on light just to see how this would be, but just seeing how the dough was and just how smooth it was in relation to the other one makes me feel like this is a much more promising situation. Just give me a sec. It's all right. So right now, as I'm going like back and forth between here and over there, because I need to make sure that that bowl doesn't overflow, I'm going to attempt to take this out. Just pray for me, y'all, because this is the part where it's, it hasn't gone very well with the breads. So, but I didn't remove the paddles, like I said I would at the beginning of this kind of bread making journey. So let me just check this machine real quick and then I'll get back. Okay, so this bread smells really, really good. <laughs> like I want to cut into it right now, but once I, I hope I can tip this out. But once I get it out, I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit and uh, go from there. Let me loosen this. This is the part that has been tough. So hopefully we can get it out. But so far, not much difficulty getting off the side. I might mess up the top a little bit. Just be because then I'm hoping that I can just slide it out. <gasps> guys, it came out with ease. Oh! Guys, guys, guys. Oh, I was, I'm chuffed, as the Brits would say. Another moment in peak adulthood. Look at this. Guys. My first, I won't say it's my first loaf of bread, but this is actually my fourth. But this is the first one that's looked this good. Oh, Malanta. Look at that beauty. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Beautiful. I know this is like top tier content. This is why you guys subscribe to the channel. Okay. For this peak adulthood moments for your girl D. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I'm chewing. Truthfully, I couldn't wait. I think after I set the camera down, it might've been 10 minutes, 
but I'd actually covered this in plastic wrap and I don't know if you can tell it's a little bit more wrinkled than it was before so I learned don't do that because it's just going to produce moisture and cause your bread to get not soggy but just a little a little wet this is perfect this is perfect i went on take a lot of course because i'm always on take a lot if i'm not on superbolus looking for a bread slicer obviously i don't have one here right now so i'm just gonna have to manually or well not manually but just uh, freehand the slices and call it a day but i might make some slices a little bit thicker and put them in a separate bag so i can make some french toast hey folks welcome back to the vlog we are in the workroom right now. I'm so discombobulated. But we're in the workroom right now because I got an order from, that I've actually been waiting on for a really freaking long time, from Happy and Lace. You guys have seen that I've bought, they're not in here, but that I've bought stuff from them like thread, scissors, random bits like that. But I made a bigger order with them actually buying some fabric and some other things that I need in order to get back into getting crafty. I'm going to show you. I'll start off with the like, small things first and then I'll get into the fabric later. Uh, so the first thing, Rota Kerikata. This is like a sewer's best friend. I also got some threads. So we have an orange, white, black, and then a green color. Then we got a cutting mat, which is actually really good quality. It's better than the one that I had back in the States. Like I got rid of my sewing supplies back in the States. This one is much better than what I had there. This is like much heavier and much better quality. But yeah, cutting mat. I bought, I bought three different types. All of them are knit fabrics, so they're stretchy, which is great. Two of them are what I had originally ordered, and then another was a substitution. So I'll get with the substitution first. Each of the fabrics that I bought, I bought in four meters. So that's about, I think it's close to like 14, 15 feet worth of fabric. So you can tell that I'm going to be making quite a few things out of these things of fabric. But anyways, so the first one is this knit kind of, because the light's shifting all over the place, I won't be able to show you the true, true color, but it's kind of like a minty, sagey green, but it's this ribbed fabric, if you can see. If you remember the pants that I hauled from H&M before the band, I have, they're kind of similar in this color. They're a little bit darker than this, and the rib, the spacing in between the ribbing is a little bit wider. Then, okay, so I'm trying to get into a little bit more color, Colors that I don't typically wear, colors that you guys don't typically see me in. I feel like this purple shirt you see me in pretty often, but it's one of the few bright colored items that I tend to wear. I tend to wear really just kind of muted, kind of closer to those neutral tones. So then I saw this and was like, I need to branch out. And this is a great way to do that. This color, like y'all don't ever see me in orange. I don't think I have orange anything. I don't even think I have orange underwear. I mean, that's TMI, but I'm just trying to think of like the bright colors that I have and I really don't have any. I bought this tangerine fabric. It's kind of like a crinkle fabric, so it's not meant to be really smooth and like wrinkle free, but you can kind of see the texture. Let me get out of the way. You can see the texture. It's like that crinkle texture. And then the last fabric is this floral one. Now I will say that one, this one surprised me the most because when I looked at the fabric online, it seemed to be a little bit brighter. I mean, I still love the pattern. And I thought that the fabric itself was like a khaki, like a chino type thing. So a little bit more structured, but this is also a knit fabric. So, but I'm not mad at it because it'll literally make everything that much better. Knits can be kind of annoying to sew, but if you know what you're doing, you know what stitches and needles and things to use, then it's not too complicated. It's this floral fabric. You're not really gonna see. Okay, that's good. So you can kind of see the floral pattern. Hey folks, so on this trip, my boo and I decided to go to the Constitutional Hill. And the reason for that visit was to educate ourselves a little bit more on South Africa's tumultuous past. South Africa has been through quite a bit, as we know, as a country, as a society, as a nation. And I think it's important that when you find yourself spending times in places like that, that do have such a tumultuous history, to educate yourself, to find out about the things that have happened in the past and how they have impacted the present and the future. So we started with an orientation video and just kind of moseyed around. We paid for a self-guided tour. so. The two of us just walked around the establishment, 
reading as much as we could, learning about as much as we could. This was probably the room that was the most impactful for me just because of the depiction of how people slept. This was how the black prisoners slept. They were barely provided any provisions for sleeping, let alone space. You can see that bodies were stacked like sardines and that's what it said on the wall, on the descriptions for it. It was interesting just learning about all the people who were prisoners there and why they were arrested. A lot of them were arrested because they didn't have their passes at the time and just random petty crimes, almost synonymous to people who have weed on them in the States and getting like 20, 30 years just for having a joint on them. So as we were walking around the prison, we would just learn about the different processes that the prisoners went through. Because of apartheid, obviously white prisoners were treated differently than black prisoners. And it's just tough reading and hearing some of the accounts of that. But it was also interesting to learn that Gandhi was a prisoner here because I did not know that. I didn't even know really anything about Gandhi. I didn't know that he was a lawyer, that he was South Africa's first Indian lawyer. There were just really interesting things to learn about him and obviously Nelson Mandela and just other people that were prisoners there. Another thing that kind of came up when we were walking around the Mandela Gandhi exhibit was wondering if Mandela and Gandhi had ever met each other. And as we were exiting this building and another group of people were coming into the building, the tour guide had said that they hadn't met. And as they said that, I kind of thought, man, I wonder what those conversations would have been like if they actually did meet. I think it would have been really impactful. And I think if they had met as old men, I think it would be really cool to just hear what they would have to say and just understand the impact that both of them had, not only on South Africa's history, but also just globally. Another thing that was really interesting were the blanket sculptures. They are made out of blankets and just random materials that they were given. I mean, look at these just sculptures. I mean, the materials were so basic, but the creativity was really there. I mean, I know it's prison and everything, but the creativity was definitely there. There were so many things about this place that were really hard to take in, but it also showed the ingenuity of people and how they passed their time. We then ended up in the courthouse, just walking around, looking at the different justices. There was a lot of beautiful artwork in this place. I don't think I was expecting the artwork, truthfully speaking, but they were some really nice pieces. I didn't catch all the artists, unfortunately, but I'm sure that I could look them up and, and see what other pieces they've created. This nun reminded me of that one horror movie. It was kind of terrifying to look at. And then these sculptures reminded us of Toy Story. If you know, you know, AKA Sid. But there was a lot of artwork here from paintings to sculptures and all sorts of different types of media that people had created. And it was really cool to see this neon light design of the, uh, the nine provinces of South Africa. After the courthouse, we went outside and ended up going to Old Fort. The view from up there was really beautiful. It was a beautiful day just to be out, so I'm glad that we were actually able to get out and educate ourselves on this incredible place, I mean, impactful place. Um, and it was interesting to learn a little bit more about Nelson Mandela because 
I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I knew nothing about Nelson Mandela until our first trip to South Africa. And yeah, the American education system and even just my own capabilities failed me. But it was just very interesting to read some of the letters that he had written and whatnot. This was probably the most eerie thing for me because it, it, was, it was just very eerie. I felt like the energy was just off and yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. The isolation cells were also kind of eerie because you barely had any room to breathe, let alone move around. Again, I think it's very important to see these types of things. It's fun to see the fun stuff, right? But I think it's also important to see where a nation like South Africa has come from and to really learn about its history. After Old Fort, we ended up going to the women's prison and just reading a little bit more about the things that happened and prisoners' experiences when they were there. It was horrific, guys. Like, I'm not even gonna lie, and I don't wanna really end this video on a, on a negative note, but I also want to give you the real. And the real is that South Africa had a really bad history when it came to apartheid, and I'm glad that it's no longer there and there's a lot of work to, to be done and I feel like it's gonna get there. I thank you guys for joining me for this video and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye guys. Bye.